Hello, in this video I'll be talking about the centigrade scale. So shown here are some of the more popular temperature scales introduced in the 18th century. The centigrade scale should look familiar to you because of its calibration points. Yeah. So the 0 degree centigrade is the ice point and 100 degree centigrade is the boiling point and everything in between is divided into 100 equal intervals. So to calibrate the mercury in glass thermometer is to note the length of the mercury thread at ice point and at steam point and divide everything between the ice points and the steam points into 100 equal intervals. If it's 10 mm, then it's going to be 25 degrees centigrade. If it's um, 20, 20 mm, then you report 75 degrees centigrade. Now what if it's 35 mm long? Ah, then it's going to be 150 degrees centigrade. The mercury in glass thermometer is not the only thermometer. In fact, you can use any thermometric property of any substance as long as it varies with temperature. So for example, we have also the constant volume gas thermometer which uses the pressure of a gas. We also have the resistance thermometer which is based on how the electrical resistance of a piece of platinum wire varies with temperature. Now the centigrade scale has two major problems. yeah. The first problem is that it's an empirical scale with no theoretical grounding based on some arbitrarily chosen thermometric property of particular substances. And because of this, three thermometers built on three chosen properties may not even agree with one another. Well, they will definitely agree on the ice point and steam point because all of them are calibrated based on these two reference temperatures. But any other temperature, they need not agree. Why? Because we assume that the thermometric property varies linearly with temperature. Is the assumption true? Well, to be fair, um, yeah, all these three properties do vary pretty linearly uh, with temperature between the ice point and steam point. But definitely the graph will not be straight when the mercury is near its boiling point or freezing point. Likewise, I don't think the pressure variation is linear when the gas is about to liquefy or when the platinum wire is about to melt. So if you are trying to measure an extremely low temperature, according to the gas thermometer, it may read a negative 100 degrees centigrade, but this one may read negative 110 degrees centigrade, and this one may read a negative uh, 50 degrees centigrade, because mercury will have frozen, yeah? So in such a situation, which is the correct temperature? Nobody knows. The second problem with the centigrade scale is that it's a relative scale it does not report an absolute temperature. It only reports whether you are colder or hotter compared to ice or steam. You might say, oh, so what? What's the big deal, right? Now think about it, yeah? When we say zero kilogram, it's clear to everyone that this means zero mass, right? And 40 kilogram is clearly twice the mass as 20 kilogram. But what about temperature? Does zero degree centigrade means zero hotness? Probably not, right? Because we know that there are stuff that are even less hot than zero degree centigrade. And is 40 degrees centigrade twice as hot as 20 degrees centigrade? Hmm. So do you realize that the centigrade scale, well, is useful, is practical, but it's not entirely convincing. Surely a better and newer scale is waiting to be invented. We'll talk about that in the next video. That's all. Ta-ta!